Hey everyone, it's Sunday the 12th of April and it's 10 o'clock in the evening. And I've got some computers to show you. And a few other bits and bobs that aren't that interesting, but they got thrown in with this anyway. So, my little brother has just completely refitted his office. Um, he wanted to get his multi-gym thing, whatever it's called, into his office as well so he could actually use it. He hasn't used it for about two years because he's had nowhere to put it. So he completely ripped out all his computer desk and display shelf and whatnot out of his office and redid everything. He had a stepdad help him do that. So he's done a very nice job. I actually like what he's done. But he wanted a bunch of stuff that he'd um, acquired from our dad recently. Gone as well as... Uh, Three more computers. If you remember, I got the two compact Evos from him a few weeks ago. Um, so I've now got the three Dells, a few other bits, and there's two computers here that my brother bought last year that he intended to use as projects. One of these he actually wanted to use as a Windows XP gaming rig project, but I'm guessing he got bored with it because he's just given them to me. Well, not given them to me. I did have to give them. Well, I will be giving him some cash as soon as he's given me the necessary details so I can give him the cash, but <laughs> he still hasn't messaged me them yet. Anyway, let's uh, pan the camera round. So. <clears throat> so, I've only got one of the Dells up here because they are pretty much the same. Well, there's another one down here, identical, and one which is a little bit older. We've got a 755 on the floor. These are Optiplexes, by the way. That's actually got a Windows XP COA sticker on it from Dell. It's actually got Dell written on it as well. And I'm guessing this was upgraded to Windows 7 Pro at some point, because below that, that's got a Windows 7 COA on it as well. This one is an Optiplex 760, and there's an identical one on the floor, which has actually got Spare PC and Working written on it on a sticker. Now, I know one of these did actually turn on and boot. One of them powered on but gave us a RAM error and one of them posted but didn't boot. I cannot remember which is which. And with the one that gave us the RAM error, I don't know if it's bad RAM or bad dim slots on the board or whatever because we didn't check it that far. We literally just plugged them in to see if they worked, and that was it. Um, yeah. I think the one that actually has got working written on it is the one that actually boots. So, we're going to show you inside these, because it's just the same as the other two I've got under there. I think the motherboards probably vary, that's about it. But the actual case design is identical to the two I've got hiding under there. I've got the 740, which is there. Excuse me, and a 380 which is there, which is my Windows 7 machine with DDR3 RAM on it. I don't get that because the number's gotten smaller. You'd have thought they'd have started with the smaller number and worked up to the bigger numbers. Ooh. Of course not. Anyway, we'll move that brick out of the way. So, here, that's a CCTV machine. I have no idea how these are used. I know I've got at least five security cameras I could connect to this. This also has audio in as well, so I could use cameras with audio enabled on them if I wanted to. I think at least what some of mine have. I think it's five cameras that I've got that I can use on this. Anyway, yeah, I'm going to set that up and have a play with that at some point. I'll do a separate video on this as well with me making myself look like a tip, probably trying to set this up, because I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't even have any DD, um, DDR, DVD rewritable discs either to put in there. I've got writable, but not rewritable. Um, oh, and there's four monitors as well. There's two here. These two would have been nice to set up on my setup in the lounge, but... As you can probably see, there's several ga I'm not going to call them scratches, I'm going to call them gouges on this. And I've got a funny feeling they're going to show pretty well 
that's assuming these monitors even work. We haven't even tried these. He just threw these in as freebies. Um, and the one underneath, well, that's just as bad. The only one, actually no, I've got two here that I haven't gotten. That little 15 inch one there looks fine. I can't see no damage, There's lots of dust on it though. And on the floor, I've got another one there. No stand or anything, but that's undamaged as well. Well, apart from a little scratch there, and a couple there. I've got a few on. Nowhere near as bad as the other one of these though. Uh, didn't even make it into his office when he bought them home, that went straight in at the bin. <laughs> but uh, my brother thinks that that little one I just showed you was used for karaoke machines because our dad's a business par with another guy and uh, they do things like discos and wedding planning, wedding pies, other various parties, you name it, anything like that, you know, various entertainment and whatnot. So that's probably what that monitor was used for. Wouldn't be surprised if that's what these computers were used for as well. Anyway, <clears throat> back this way, two computers here. Now this one, I've already got the side panels off of these. Not because I'm fully prepared this time, just because I've tried recording these videos a couple of times before this and failed anyway. So, this one my brother bought at a car boot last year. I did actually see this, but I walked away from it. I wish I didn't, but never mind. <laughs> um, this is one that he actually intended to turn into a Windows XP gaming rig. And to be honest, it would have been great for that. It will be great for that. I do believe it does turn on and post. And if memory serves correctly, the only thing that was missing from this was a hard drive. Um, that's what we've got inside there. Is this disc that came with it inside the case. And there's the hard drive bay. Um, RAM, graphics card. I can't actually see what the graphics card is. But I do plan to do... A separate video on this one getting it all up and running and working and whatnot so we'll have a look at that then um, but it came with two and a half gigs of RAM we've got three 512 gig sticks which are there there's two crucial crucial seems to be a very popular brand in um, DDR400 but this one is a gigabyte stick I believe this is my third one that I've got you don't often come across the um, one gigabyte DDR400 sticks. They're quite rare. I've seen, well, the only ones I've seen are the three that I've got. I haven't even been able to find any on eBay when I've looked on there. Anyway, there's not a lot to say about the motherboard. It's an MSI brand. Um, I can't tell you what the power supply is at the minute because either the stick has been taken off this side or it's on this back side there so it's hidden. It's got two identical DVD RW drives in there except one's white one's black so I'm guessing the top one was replaced at some point. Oh the case is an Evesham. I don't know if this is an OEM machine or if someone's you know someone has built a custom computer into this using an OEM case because they liked it because it is actually quite a nice case isn't it? I do like that it's quite nice the only reason I thought it might be an OEM case at least is because it's got the Pentium 4 sticker on the front and it's got another sticker there missing and I'm guessing going by the size of it as it's about the same size as the P4 sticker it would have been one of those stickers that said designed for Windows XP and whatnot. <clears throat> so, we've actually got the four toolless runners for the hard drives. You put these on your hard drives and you can just slide them into the bay. You don't need to worry about clipping it down. Ooh, for some rig... Oh, I thought that was a um, four pin 12 volt connector for the processor. It's not, it's a six pin. For a video card, so yeah, this power supply is definitely newer than the motherboard because it's got AGP slot on there. It doesn't have onboard VGA, so you've got to use that. One, 
We've got five PCI slots on here. There's two bright orange SAR connectors there. So if I really wanted to, to get this working, I could use one of my small um, SAR hard drives. By small, I mean one of my um, 8 gig drives to chuck in here or something like that. Actually, I think I've got some a little bit bigger than that. I think I might have a couple of 160s. Or I could just go with the IDE drive because I have actually got the cable here ready to go. <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to decide that when I'm ready to play with this. Oh, did I mention it's lockable as well? It's now the third case in my collection that's got a lock on it. Uh, like I said, I have got the side panel to this. It actually fell off on this one. Um, took it out of the back of his car and the side panel just fell off. So I just threw it on top of my hand car as it was. So, yeah, I'm actually looking forward to getting this one up and running. Might switch the power supply out, depending on what this is rated, because I might keep that as a spare. Hi -yup. So, I'm going to hike this off here now. I'm going to put the RAM in there, so I don't know where it is. I'll put that in there as well, so I know where that is. And I'm presuming that's a driving utility disc for that motherboard. It actually says not Windows 7 on it. That'll stop people mistaking that as a Windows 7 disc. So, does that mean this actually had Windows 7 on it at one point? It have been a fairly low end with DDR400 on it and a Pentium 4 processor. It's definitely a Pentium processor on there, because I can tell from the heatsink, that's a Pentium heatsink. Oh, there we go. <laughs> right, I'm going to have to stack all these back up here because I haven't got the room. Now, there's another one. I can't remember where my brother got this one from, but I do like this case. I'm actually tempted to put all the gubbins from the computer I've just built into this one because I like this case. I like this. Anyway, so that's a DVD ROM with disc rewriter on it, I think. Yeah. Nothing fancy then. It's an IDE type drive as well. On the wrong connector. It's meant to be on that one. Oh, an Asus HDD cable. Yeah, this is definitely a home build machine, this one. Well, I just want to quickly show you how the side panels go on this one, because I've never seen this before. I'm used to them going on that way, you know, with your handle to pull a side cover off that way up. Nope! Goes this way up, does this. Line it up, just go boop. And I have to say, that's the easiest I've ever had that type of side panel go on. And then you have the top cover that goes on on top of that and covers these up. And sort of locks them into place, which I do have as well. It's just here, so that would just go boink on top. And it looks like you've just got a single screw hole. Yeah, just a single screw hole there, just to hold it on. <clears throat> so... Not a badly designed case. It's quite weird that it just goes like that. <laughs> now, I don't know the status of this system. I don't know if the board works. I don't know if it posts. I don't know if it powers up or anything like that. Um, like I said, I can't even remember where he got it from. What I'd pause there is because this DVD drive, not DVD drive, um, what is actually going on here? <laughs> I'm getting confused with my cables. All right, okay, I figured it out now. Yeah, for some. It's got connectors on it for a floppy disk drive. Let me look at the front. Oh! I'd never noticed that when I first looked at it. I've never seen one of those. That's a card reader with floppy disk drive built in. That's why I was confused. I was looking at the back here and I saw the floppy disk drive power cable and IDE cable. I thought, well, why is that going to a card reader? When I first saw it, I only noticed the two, 
the card slot, so I just assumed card reader, you know. Didn't notice that it's actually a floppy disk drive as well. well. That's an unusual piece of kit, I've never seen one of those. Uh, what have we got? We've got a couple of extra USB ports down the bottom there. We have four DIMM slots in there. This is an Asus motherboard, by the way. And if you want the motherboard model number to Google, it's A8N-SLI space SE. Well, I'm presuming that's the model number. That is the only number I can find that resembles such a thing. So, we've got a little fan here. We've got a Molex power connector here. I presume it's for the PCIe slots because we've got two of those on here. One blue, one black. Three normal PCI slots and two short PCIe slots here. Four dim and it looks like we've got two channel or dual channel dim slots here because we've got two blue, two black. Uh, we've got one case fan up there, header. Got another case fan header there. And that's it, we've got four SATA connectors there. It's not a bad board, it's an AMD, so I'm guessing that's at least dual core on that. But, uh, <clears throat> what, uh, what does annoy me with this system, you know, someone's built this system at home, obviously. You know, Asus, in my opinion, is not a bad board. I've had touch wood good experiences with Asus boards but they've actually stuck in a cheap wind power power supply and I can guarantee you when I pull that power supply out of there it's going to be light as hell you know if you're going for a cheap crap motherboard go for a cheap crap power supply <laughs> don't put them in a machine that you care about anyway because I've seen these fail as well and uh, yeah they're just they're unreliable pieces of crap don't use wind power Although having said that, my one in my old build was a wind power and that lasted several years. Although the fans didn't. <laughs> it kept killing fans for some reason. I'm, uh, I'm still not sure why. Yeah. So yeah, I'll do a separate video on this as well. And I might do a video on all three Dells together as I know one of those work and it shouldn't take a lot to get the other two to work either. So long as the RAM slots aren't what's failed on that on the um, system with the bad RAM. If it's just the RAM that's failed then I can change it, it's not a problem. Right, I suppose I better put the covers back on this out of the way. I've just done a complete 360 looking for it. cover for the other case is actually in the uh, hallway so that can stay there for now. So that goes on like that. Does that mean that then slides back? I have actually no idea how this top cover goes on. But leave it like that for now. She's surprised because when he contacted me on Facebook a couple of days ago because he actually wanted some Ethernet cables as well and he said did I want to buy the three Dells so I said yeah of course I'll buy them off you and I said what about the CCTV thing he said yeah I'll chuck that in as well so I agreed on that I didn't know he was going to add these to the bill as well <laughs> so I didn't find that out till today actually I want telling porkies. I did say I had three. There's the second one. Oop. I believe this one's the one with the faulty RAM. I think. <laughs> I can't remember. But that is the older one out of these three, and that one doesn't have a floppy disk drive. It does, and that does. Never mind. Tempted. If I can, I ain't got any room in the kitchen. I like to clear some room in the kitchen tomorrow. 
and get these in there and I might do a video tomorrow if I feel up to it. Anywho, I'm going to end the video before I start rambling and rambling and rambling like I normally do. So, thanks a lot for watching. Stay tuned for at least, well, I don't know, what, four videos worth of equipment here. May not be very interesting, but it's better than vlogs, I find. Anyway, well, I don't mind doing the vlogs. I just think stuff like that is more interesting personally when I'm actually doing something. That's just my opinion anyway. So, I'm rambling like I said I would. Thanks a lot for watching. I will talk to you again in the next one. Bye.